Hi guys. Happy Tuesday morning. So you're going to get two videos from me today. One is this video here. And the next video is going to be uh, a bailing video and hopefully that goes well, but we'll cover that topic later. I want to talk to you guys today about something that is extraordinarily important. And this is actually a crisis in my opinion. And it is a crisis that is not being talked about enough. I live in the state of Pennsylvania, if you didn't know, and here on our homestead, we have horses, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and a whole flock of miscellaneous birds, uh, mostly chickens and turkeys. As you may figure, um, having a veterinarian is extremely important. I am very well versed with animal husbandry, and I can do a lot of things by myself. But there are instances where we need vets. Um, just so everybody knows, I'm good. I don't need a vet right now. All of my animals are, are good. But that could change like that. Um, I got a text message this morning. And this is happening more and more regularly where I'm getting these messages. People wanting to reach out saying, who can we use as a vet? Because nobody's taking new clients. I got a new goat. I have a problem with it. I can't find a vet. What do I do? Then later to say, I lost this animal or, you know, or maybe we got it straightened out because they found somebody that could help them that wasn't a vet or they YouTube some, you know, advice, which at this point, that's what we've got. To, that's, that's all we've got. There are very far and few large animal vets, and I'm not talking about equine vets. We do have in my area, a good assortment of equine vets horse vets that will take care of horses, but they don't see goats, sheep, cows, and, and the likes, okay? they You might get lucky and have your horse vet coming to your place and say, hey, my dog needs a rabies shot. Can you hook me up? You may get lucky with that. But if you call them up and say, I have a bovine emergency, they're going to be like, pound rocks, okay? So we are in a shortage of veterinarians, plain and simple. They are overworked. They are underpaid and they just can't see everybody. And I get that. And I am an existing customer, I'm, I'm a good standing, always, you know, pay upfront cash, you know, always pay my bills. I'm not this customer that's up there, up their butt all the time saying, hey, I need this, hey, I need this. I am a, I will see you once a year and stay out of your hair. And if I need something in the meantime, I'll give you a phone call and you can give it to me and I'll take care of my animals under your guidance, okay? That is me in a nutshell. I got a letter last week um, and this is in no way faulting the veterinarians. I get it. I understand. But this letter is basically saying I am now outside of their service area. They are so short staffed that they'll no longer come this far and I am 25 minutes away. So I called them and I said, okay, my uncle may be in your service area. I'm not sure. I, I haven't talked to him to see if he got this letter yet or not. Um, and it's not just me, my neighbor right down the hill that has many ponies and goats got the same letter. Okay. So it's not just me. This is, this is a thing. Um, I said, Hey, you know, my uncle may be in your service area. If I have an animal situation where I need it to be seen, if I haul them to, to his place, Will you see them? No. Okay. If I haul them to you, will you see them? No, because we don't have the facility for that. So there's no way that I can get you to see my animal. No, I'm so sorry. We just don't have the staff. Okay. Who will? So they gave me two other vets to call. I called the other vets. They're not taking new clients. Now I'm a new client because my vet dropped me because I'm outside of their service area. Okay, very good. Uh, and all of this would be not as concerning if not for two things. The first thing, this year? No, last year, last June, I think it was. This, I don't know if this is just the state of Pennsylvania, but they put into act where Tractor Supply, Rural King, other farm supply stores can no longer sell antibiotics or like steroid eye ointments, treatment for mastitis. Can't get that anymore. It's not allowed by law. Okay, so I am legally not allowed to treat my own animals. 
but the people that are legally allowed to treat my animals won't see my animals because they're too short staffed. This is a serious crisis and I, it's not getting enough publication, if at all. I haven't heard anything about it from anybody, but this is a huge issue. So if my cow gets mastitis, I can't treat her and my vet won't come. So I just have to let my cow die. Or somebody will call me the terrible one because I, I guess I'm going to have to, to put it down myself. Uh, and people, of course, will say, oh my God, that's terrible. Well, it's a lot better than dying slowly of infection. Um, what are we supposed to do? So I have a solution. Uh, I've, I've always been one that voices my concern, but I, I usually don't do a whole lot of follow through. I kind of, and maybe this is, you know, a large portion of why this country has gone to shit because too many people are like me in the sense that they will voice their concerns, but then they don't do the follow through. And then, so nothing ever happens, but this time I'm doing the follow through because this is a huge crisis. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention before I get into any types of possible solutions just a month ago, maybe two months ago, I didn't look in depth in the story. You can Google it. You can look it up. It's been talked about on YouTube as well. Two dairy farmers in the state of Pennsylvania were arrested for treating their cows. So it's illegal to treat your own animals without a veterinarian, but you don't get a veterinarian because they won't come to you. So what are you to do? My solutions. I'm going to as soon as I go in the house from watering the cows, I'm going to call my local representative. I'm going to call her and I'm going to ask her for guidance as to who to speak to. The first thing that needs to happen is they need to allow farmers to purchase the resources that they need over the counter again. This law is doing nothing but tying people's hands. I slightly understand the reason why they did it because you know, oh, well, this dog, we think it has an eye infection. We went and bought teramycin. Now the dog needs its eye out. I get that. But if you can't take the dog to the vet to see somebody, I know small animal vets don't have the same issue, but I'm using it as reference. If I can't take that animal to the vet to get seen, then I have to do my best to treat it. Or that's just inhumane. And you can also go to jail for that. So they need to stop this nonsense, put the beds back on the shelf. Now we're not able to get things like banamine, dexamethasone. I understand that that has to come from a veterinarian, but amoxicillin, penicillin, um, teramycin, mastitis treatment, those things should all be readily available. They should all be readily available. The second thing that needs to happen is I believe the state needs to, the state needs to offer incentives. So you need hiring bonuses and relocation bonuses to try to encourage large animal veterinarians to come in from out of state. They do it with doctors. They do it with lawyers. They do it with other people. They need to start doing it with this. This is, this is a crisis. And the other thing I believe needs to happen is they need to start offering incentives for kids that are going to school that already want to be a veterinarian. Give special scholarships to those that decide to go into the large animal sector of veterinarians um they need to give special incentives to those because there is a shortage of farm vets so in a point in time where farming and homesteading has reached all-time highs out of necessity i believe and going back to good old days we're reaching a point where we don't have the medical backup to help us so now we're losing animals because vets can't see them this is horribly deterring to new farmers, to new animal owners. They just trying to do a little bit better for themselves. They want a backyard goat because they want to have, you know, a little bit of freedom with having milk if they want it. And now their goat gets M worm, goes down and dies in three days because they can't see a vet. How do you feel as a new goat owner? You feel defeated. You'll say, I never have another goat again because you don't have the backup. People need to have this backup. Again, I'm a person that maybe sees a vet once a year and that's to stay on good standings. Um, I try to do most things for myself, but that's not to say that my cow doesn't have a breech calf and need an emergency C-section. Can I do that? Yeah, but guess what? That cow's gonna have to die first. 
if I have a vet, maybe something else could be done. Ultimately, it may end up being the end game. That cow may end up losing its life anyways, but at least I'm under a veterinarian. God forbid if I had a pesty neighbor that was like, oh my God, she's cutting her cow open. That's inhumane. I'm calling the cops. Now I go to jail because I'm just trying to save my calf. These things need to change. We're in a vicious cycle right now and it's not good. This is only gonna spiral out of control. This needs to get more coverage. I don't like to come on here and do rant videos again, unless it pertains to the homestead. And I feel like this is extremely important. So I'm gonna encourage all of you to do a couple things. I'm gonna encourage you to call your large animal vets and look into this. Even if you don't have a large animal, I encourage you to call and say, hey, I would like to get a goat down the road. Will you cover this area? See what they say. And, and if you're getting animals and you don't already have a large animal vet, I strongly suggest you look into that first. New livestock owners are going to need veterinary help at some point because you're gonna have an issue that you don't understand. It's different than a dog and a cat, different than a hamster or a gerbil, okay? you're gonna need a vet at some point. You may learn and pick up everything and be able to do a lot for yourself, but when your goat goes down with M-worm, you need dexamethasone. And the only place you get dexamethasone is from your vet. So call your local large animal vets, see their service area, find out if they're dropping new customers, if they're dropping existing customers, you know, not taking on new ones, find out these things. If that's the case, I also strongly suggest you look and see if your local farm supply store is still able to carry your basic necessities, your antibiotics, your pink eye treatments, your mastitis, mastitis treatments, those types of things. Look into that and see if they're still able to carry it. If they aren't, if the vet can't see you, if you're in a location and a vet can't see you and your, your farm supply place no longer carries basic necessities to keep your animal healthy, you need to go talk to your state, your state government. I, I think letters need to be written. I think we have gotten so far past. You know, when I was in sixth grade, we're gonna go back in time here and have a little story time. I need a sip of coffee, it's getting cold. All right, back in sixth grade, I had an assignment and we had to write to, was it our Senator? With a problem that we wanted fixed. And I lived right here on this piece of property. And my problem was our road was terrible and it's a state road. And so I, I wrote to him and I never forget how excited I was when he wrote back. I think I still have that letter somewhere actually. That was our sixth grade assignment. I don't think they do that anymore in schools, but I think this is something that, you know, if people don't know they can write letters, that's just one more way we can get away with what we want. But I think we need to start getting back into that. We need to start writing letters. And this is vital, guys. This is very important. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna suggest, if you're in a situation where you cannot get a vet and you cannot buy things over the counter at Tractor Supply or wherever, I strongly suggest you start looking for books, library books, go buy books, Find books on how the old timers did it. Find books on what wild thing that you can go and harvest will treat what ail ailment in an animal. What herbs will help with this? It's not going to maybe save a, an animal's life, but maybe it will. And in a situation where you're left to your own devices, we need every bit of information to our advantage. So let's bring back granny and grandpa ways, okay? Let's bring back the unorthodox things that they used to do. My, um, here's another fun story, and I'm not recommending this, okay? So don't be like, oh, she's abusing animals. Not recommending. Merely sharing a story with you, okay? This, this is a good one. And I gotta, when I'm talking, my mouth gets dry. I'm really good at talking a lot, so every once in a while I need to wet the whistle. This is a story that I was not alive or on this earth for. This happened before my time, but this story was told to me multiple times. We had an elderly gentleman that lived near nearby. He was still a Leechburg address, but he was 
on the other side. Um, his name was Joe. I know his last name, but I'm not going to share it now. But Joe, Joe was something else, man. He was a character. He was wonderful. And if you rolled up to Joe's house, likely a chicken or a goat would come out of the house with him. He was just that guy. He had all types of livestock, all types of animals, and he knew everything. He, my pap hit a um, skunk one time and she had babies when he was mowing hay and you can't see them and it was an accident. She had two babies and he took Joe, the skunks, and he said, hey, you think you could descent these? We'll keep them and, and make sure that they're healthy. And he did it. He, he descented them right in the house. Um, Joe knew how to do a little bit of everything. But prior to my time, my grandparents had a really good friendship with Joe and they had bought a German Shepherd puppy and they paid a lot of money back then for this German Shepherd puppy. It was a really well-bred dog and they loved him so much. And I want to say he was nine or 10 months and he came down vitally ill. They took him to the vet. The vet said, nothing we can do. You're gonna have to put him down. Of course, they didn't like that option and they thought they'd get a second opinion. But in the meantime, they told Joe what was happening. And uh, he had parvo is what he had. The vet diagnosed him with parvo, but they said that he was too far past. They couldn't do anything for him. So they took the puppy to Joe and Joe said, there's only one thing to be done. He said, you're going to have to pour some kerosene down his throat. Kerosene? He said, yeah, it's either going to kill him or cure him. And uh, so they did because they had no other alternative. And that dog lived a ripe old life. I don't remember how old he was when he died, but I want to say he was about 13. I might be wrong on that, but I have family members that are watching this, so they may be able to correct me. Yeah, that happened. And that was back in the day. So that was prior to my time. So you're going back. Shall I disclose my age? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, this story um, is quite a while ago. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess it was roughly 45 to 50 years ago. It was a different world back then, out of necessity. And you had people that were able to, well, as one of my favorite YouTubers says, they were able to granny witch things. Granny witching is an Appalachian term, Appalachian term used for being able to medicate and help things. So, um, yeah, I mean, they were just able to do these types of things back then. It's um, something that has died out, and now it is more important than ever. So, to sum up, find out if your local farm vets are able to service you. Find out if they're staffed enough. Um, in different parts of the country, this may be a non-issue, where there are plenty of large animals and big farms. This might not be a problem. Here, it is a huge concern, especially because I was looking at building a large building and getting about 50 more sheep. I am thinking twice about that because I don't have a vet that's going to be able to help me if I have an issue. So, yeah, that's gonna put the brakes on it for right now. Um, do some research. If there is a problem like I'm talking about here in the state of Pennsylvania, I strongly encourage you to push the issue. I strongly encourage you to take the time out of your day, be brave and be determined and change the laws. This needs to happen. We're, we're in a crisis amongst other crises. But if you wanna be self-sustaining at all, this is a big crisis. All right, guys, uh, that's enough for today. 20 minutes, ought to do it. <laughs> uh, I gotta go hop on the tractor soon, but I'm gonna head into the house for a little bit and uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you find out anything. I would love to hear it. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear it. Um, if you have any really good book resources on animal husbandry and natural medications, please link them, comment about them, tell me what they are. I want to know what they are, okay? Uh, get this word out there guys share this with everybody because this this doesn't get enough coverage and it needs to and I'm hoping I'm gonna change that soon. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you later on when we're bailing <laughs>